talk about books, resources, lifelong learning, and what makes our community great. I'm your host, Elizabeth, and today, Sarah is joining me. In this episode, we'll talk about books that highlight the relationship between mothers and daughters, just in time for Mother's Day. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. It's so nice to have you with us today. And could you introduce yourself a little bit, just so that listeners know what you do at the West Dallas Public Library. Absolutely. Um, My name is Sarah, and I'm one of the many library assistants here at the West Dallas Public Library. You'll often see us manning the information desk, but we also help out with displays, and we also do um, research and helping people find resources, and we help out with blogs, and we also occasionally do a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for joining us for the podcast. It's so much fun. Today we're talking about books about mothers and daughters in all different kinds of ways. Would you like to start with your first recommendation, Sarah? Absolutely. The first one I'm going to start out with is by Ogamora. She's a Caldecott-winning author for a book called Thank You, Omu, but what I read was called Saturday, and it's a lovely children's picture book, and it's focused around a mother and daughter who are so excited for Saturday because the mom, she works all the other days of the week, and they've got all these fun activities planned. And so they're going to do story time, go to the hair salon, get their hair done, and, you know, picnic and have all sorts of fun activities. But as sometimes things happen, you know, things come up and one thing after another, the enjoyment of their day has been hampered by events going south. And so, you know, it's kind of sounds like this book is a bit of a downer, um, but actually it ends really strong and positively. And um, I think this is a great story to share with a child, um, not only because, you know, it's it's a strong African-American woman, you know, and the understanding is, is that she has to work a lot and, you know, but she still wants to make time for her child. You know, these are all, you know, positive things, but then, you know, they get to the end of the story and they're still okay with their day because they got to spend it together. And that's just a super sweet message. And I think kids can benefit from hearing that you're going to have days that just, you know, they had such promise and things don't go the way you have planned for them to go and that it's and it's also a good reminder for parents that you know sometimes it's not what you get done it's doing it together so I just thought that was a very beautiful story Uh, it's very cutely illustrated and uh, I think that's one that um, mothers and children can really appreciate I have read that with my children and I absolutely agree that it's a wonderful story and it does sound like a little bit of a downer when you describe it but it's totally not it's it's <laughs> such a lovely story um, thank you for that recommendation sir um, I'm gonna go with my next recommendation Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman it's a lot darker. <laughs> it's not even a children's book. It's it's definitely an adult read. It's about a socially awkward woman. She falls in love, develops some feelings for somebody in IT at her work, and starts to work on herself. And 
It's a funny story, but it is dark because the relationship with her mother is quite a traumatic one. It definitely makes you think, you wonder what is going on with the mother's relationship with her through the the book, and it does start to show itself, the relationship. But if you want a story about a deeply damaging relationship between mothers and daughters, <laughs> this is the one for you. Um, also, if you enjoyed books like A Man Called Over by Frederick Beckman, you you will probably enjoy this one as well. I too have read that one and enjoyed it immensely. Um, she's the character herself uh, is just so kind of awkward, painfully awkward <laughs> socially, and um, you know she put a person on a pedestal and she's kind of like decided that if only they met, you know, of course he'd fall madly in love with her, which, you know, who hasn't enjoyed that little (laughs) fantasy from time to time, but you know, like just seeing how her mind works and then how she moves in society. It's a very interesting story that way. But yes, she has such a relationship with her mother that, you know, if, if you did, if you wanted to feel better about your own relationship <laughs> with your mother, this is definitely a good one to read. Absolutely. Yeah. Funny but dark. That's yes. what my that will be my takeaway recommendation or takeaway idea for that one. Okay, let's move on to you, Sarah, again. Okay. Um I do have one other children's book, and this one is called The Mommy Book by Todd Parr. And um well, it's not very deep. It's it basically it's brightly colored, kind of simplistic drawings, but it's very inviting. And you go through it and you see the different likes of mothers. So, you know, and just kind of what some mothers do. So some mothers drive minivans. Some mothers like riding motorcycles. You know, so it kind of goes through a bunch of different things. So you can get the get the sense that you know there's a variety as far as mothers you can have lots of likes and dislikes and interests and you know and all of it's okay but the central theme what you when you get to the end um it's a positive message of mommy love for their children so it's just super sweet and easy read um that reinforces you know to the child no matter what kind of mommy you have and what activity she likes to do, when it comes to the end of it all, she wants you to be a happy child and she loves you. So who doesn't love a message like that? Fantastic. Thanks. My next recommendation <laughs> is Secret Daughter by Shilpi Samaya Gauda. And this is a story set in India and the United States. It's about two different mothers. The mother in India has to give her daughter up for adoption. And then there's a mother, a family, who wants to adopt in the United States, and she, the mother there can't conceive her own child. So it's a story about adoption, but also navigating different cultures and finding yourself in identities of motherhood, loss, love, all sorts of connections. It's a very compelling read. I remember enjoying it. It was published a few years ago, 2010. Um, But if you enjoy that cultural connection, and also the side of adoption, that there are different ways we are mothers and different facets of motherhood. This might be for you. What about you? All right. My next book um, that I read was the Mother Daughter Book Club. Now, this is the first in a series. So if you're looking for something that can extend on beyond just the first book, this might be for you. Um, it's centered around a group of four preteen girls and their mothers, one of whom is a librarian, uh, decide that they're going to form a mother-daughter book club. 
and they get varying degrees of pushback from the girls. (laughs) (laughs) So they end up reading Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, who, you know, in the story uh, is apparently from their town, which I believe is Concord. And, you know, they, as they're going through reading Little Women, the four preteen girls have their own, you know, issues that come up. So, you know, you know, Little Women obviously has like Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, the four daughters, and um, they have their own relationship with Marmy and their own personalities, just as these four preteen girls do. And um, so they deal with lots of different crushes, like, or topics like crushes, or teasing, uh, peer pressure. Um, they talk briefly about, like, hobbies and vocational interests. Uh, child-parent interaction and relationships. Um, there's even the loss of a parent, um, and, and not just through death, but also through, like, um, you know, working distantly from the family. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it touches on a lot of different subjects. So, you know, I can see this being excellent for a book club or even just a book club of two if you want to do this with, you know, um, a daughter, a mother-daughter, do your own book club. and. So you can talk about lots of the topics that come up and would lead to some discussion. There is a couple things in it that maybe you're okay with, maybe not, but um, there is a food fight in there. So if you're a little bit worried about your dining room getting (laughs) trashed, that is something to maybe discuss after it happens and about how that's not okay. And then there's also um, some uh, fat shaming. So... Mm -hmm. Um, and some like name calling and things like that. So, and it's not just by the mean girl, it's by the family that you like. So, you know, just kind of take that into consideration. But again, this could be an excellent discussion talking point with your child about, you know, why it's okay, why it's not okay, you know, and, and how you should deal with that in your own family. I do think that this would be a kind of a fun way to have your own book club and, you know, maybe even consider doing Little Women in tandem with it because, you know, then your own child can decide whether she's kind of like Meg and, you know, is, you know, a little bit more traditional or she's like Joe and she's, you know, more progressive and, you know, wants to be a writer or, or, you know, if she's kind of calm and sweet like Beth and likes pet, you know, animals Mm -hmm. and, or is, you know, like an artistic kind of person like Amy, but, you know, also kind of a spitfire. So, you know, there's, in both stories, there's characters that you can, relate to or your daughter might be able to relate to that, um, you know, that you guys can kind of identify with. Going from mother-daughter book clubs to time travel. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My next recommendation is The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. Um, This is set in the 1970s, but also in the present day. The mother in the 1970s discovers that she is pregnant with a child who has a heart defect. And at the time, there isn't much that can be done medically for that child. It just so happens that in her life, she has a brother-in-law who is a physicist and maybe there's a solution. It does involve time travel to around the time of 9-11, which, not to give too much away, does cause some difficulty in the time travel department in getting back to the 1970s. So there's a little bit of angst there. And I'm not putting that lightly. I read it and I was really worried about this mother and her child. But um, also kind of a fun read because of the time travel aspect. And I love books with that (laughs) as a theme. So, yeah, something fun but also interesting if you enjoy that kind of thing. Excellent. 
Uh, my next book is um, another one where the mother-daughter relationship is definitely out of the norm. <laughs> um, it's called <laughs> Baby Teeth by yeah. Zoja Stage. And um, it actually came up as a runner-up in the 2018 Goodreads for Best Horror. Though I probably would describe it more as like a psychological thriller. Um, It centers around a a triad. So the mother, Suzette, the father, Alex, and their child, Hannah. And um, Suzette has a history with some health issues. Um, So she's a little bit fragile that way. Uh, she's an interior designer by trade, but due to some complications, she's had to homeschool her their daughter, Hannah. Um, Hannah hasn't been talking, but when she starts, the head games begin. So to her father, she is the perfect angel. And he has trouble understanding why his wife is growing increasingly upset. Um, but... The, the daughter is starting to play kind of cat and mouse with the mother, um, just terrorizing her, really. And, you know, part of Suzette's plight is obviously she wants to be a good mother, but she's running up against this really problem child. And how do you deal with that? And when you don't have the support of your spouse because they don't see it, you know, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And so the point of view from the story switches from mother and daughter. So you can kind of get into the heads of each, you know, each character there. Um, and you kind of wonder, like, is the dad going to catch on to Hannah's games? Or, like, what are they going to do with this dangerously precocious <laughs> child? So I don't want to say more than that and, and ruin how it goes. But it is... <laughs> Definitely a page turner, and again, you know, hold this, on to your seats. Hold on to your seats, <laughs> and just you know, it'll make you ever so thankful that you have the child that you have. <laughs> so I'll just say that. Excellent. My final recommendation um, is a read in progress. It's send for me. It just came out this year in February. It's written by Lauren Fox, who is a local Milwaukee author, and it's about motherhood across generations. It's actually, there's a granddaughter, a mother, and a grandmother. Um, It's historical fiction set in Germany. You read about Clara, Annalise, and Claire, and Claire is actually in Wisconsin. She's the granddaughter and um, she is the one who discovers letters between her mother and her grandmother and that starts a journey of discovering more about her family and I I can't give you any more um, spoilers because actually I haven't finished reading it but I've enjoyed it so far and I recommend it even based on just the start. <laughs> if you enjoy historical fiction and want to support our local authors, this one's a one to try. Excellent. (laughs) Read local, folks. (laughs) Read local. (laughs) How about you? Um, My last one is an oldie but a goodie. I mean, not Little Women old, but um, from the late 80s. It's Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, and it tells the story of four immigrant Chinese families And the mothers uh, set up this club and they play mahjong. And it's really kind of a juxtaposition between the traditional older ways that the the mothers are familiar with and the daughters, you know, growing up in America and embracing, you know, all that entails. And, you know, the mothers have these histories that the daughters don't know anything about. And when they get older, the mothers end up sharing the stories with their daughters, and they kind of help them understand where they're coming from, kind of instill their values and and well wishes for their children. Um, Mm -hmm. They want to share that with their daughters so they, you know, understand their self-worth and can understand that, you know, 
the things that mothers do, sometimes you don't always feel the love, but it's always there. And, you know, in the background of all this is one of the daughters is actually meeting some siblings that she didn't know she had. So that is kind of the underpinning of the story where it eventually goes to, but these four stories of the the mothers are amazing and moving. And I remember when I watched the movie, I was just waterworks, you know, just (laughs) feeling all these mother daughter feelings. So Mm -hmm. um, definitely a, a, a tearjerker, but also kind of empowering. So I think that would be another excellent mother-daughter read maybe if you do the adult mother-daughter mm-hmm. book club absolutely <laughs> and and read that together and then that could open a conversation maybe for your own family histories or mm-hmm. um you know lessons that they want to impart so i think that would be an excellent choice wonderful thank you if you enjoyed hearing us talk about books today Why not join us for our new nonfiction book club? Our first meeting is June 2nd. Please refer to our website for more information about registering. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Desk with your host, Elizabeth, and guest, Sarah. (laughs) We hope you enjoyed our recommendations for books on mothers and daughters. You can find the book titles we discussed in the show notes. Head to westalislibrary.org for more information. We hope you'll join us next month when the other Sarah talks with another staffer about Pride Month reads. That's all for this episode. See you next time.